In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed feast here once, and it always is a blessed feast. Today, of course, is a, a day in which we commemorate uh, the, the finding of the wonder-working icon of the Mother of God, known as the Znamenya icon of the Mother of God. However, there's been many things that have happened this past week, including the anniversary, the four-year anniversary of the repose of our Father, I will dare to say our Father among the Saints, our Holy Elder, Yerinda Frem, who reposed four years ago, December 7th of 2019. So some of you may not know who Yerinda Frem is, and if not, well, that's anyone who's a convert to Orthodoxy or who certainly is Greek or has been Orthodox for a while has probably heard of Elder Ephraim. Elder Ephraim, of course, was a, a little man who came from Mount Athos, a small hero monk with a weak voice who, I would dare say, changed the world. He came from the Holy Mountain with one purpose, and that was to establish a monastery. But he didn't just establish one monastery in North America, but I believe anywhere in the neighborhood from 17 to 22 monasteries, if, if my remembrance of the number is correct. Within 18 years, he established more monasteries than were established on Mount Athos in 200 years. Only a saint could accomplish such a feat. Only a man sent by God. I knew a man in London, Ontario, who was his translator. I knew a couple of his spiritual children. And uh, this wonderful man, may God grant him memory eternal, Sophocles, who only reposed not too long after his spiritual father, his beloved elder. And just to give you an idea of his holiness, one time Sophocles was looking to go to the holy mountain. Forgive me, any member of the Petru family who may see this later and think, well, he missed some details. I don't have the best memory. <laughs> but Sophocles was looking to go to the Holy Mountain and had missed the boat a few times to go to Mount Athos. And he was getting ready to give up. And all of a sudden, at the docks where he was, the payphone started ringing. And he had an inclination to go and answer the phone. And when he picked it up, a little voice on the other end said, Hello, Sophocles, don't leave just yet. This is Elder Ephraim. You know, a, a boat will be coming in five minutes. And that began this man's incredible spiritual journey. Because he realized, of course, the reality of Christ, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the grace of the Holy Orthodox Church. Or how else could this little, of, this little elderly, this little saintly priest from Mount Athos have known his name? So, one thing that's important to remember about Elder Ephraim is that he was, he was reared in the spiritual life by Saint Joseph the Hesychast, who taught him most of all the importance of obedience and how this both restores and elevates a man to grace. The Hesychastic life in prayer is about orienting oneself to God and becoming or rather coming closer to our pre-fallen state. The state that Adam had and a constant remembrance of God. Because this is what was in the Garden of Eden. Adam always remembered God. And as we fast now in the Nativity fast, in which you'll see more clearly in the Lenten fast, we come closer to a state of eating and living than what Adam had experienced before the fall. The Jesus Prayer helps us to accomplish this constant remembrance of God, which is something that Elder Ephraim had constantly taught to his disciples. Man was made, you see, to walk upright, so that his mind and his heart, his eyes would be ever fixed towards heaven, towards his true home, and not on the things of this earth. And to what heights our Savior indeed seeks to elevate us. We see this in the example of the gospel today, of the woman who was bent over for 18 years. Our father among the saints, St. Saint Gregory the Great, 
says that this woman signifies to us, not merely symbolizes, but this was truly a, a woman who was healed. But she also signifies for us fallen human nature. Like the fig tree earlier in the gospel, which withered and produced no fruit at the command of God because of its fruitlessness. And like the woman, both were created well. The tree, the woman, both were created well. But human nature fell into sin of its own accord and preferred neither fruitful works nor an upright state. So why, why did it forget its upright state? Because it was unwilling to produce the fruit of obedience. You pay close children because this also applies in your own life. This applies to mom and dad as well and yes, even cleaning your room. When we set our gaze to the things of the earth, we sin, and we fall short of what's heavenly, and we fail to look upward. St. Joseph the Hezekiah said that obedience is to subordinate your soul's convictions so that you may be freed from your, from your self-will, from your self-love. Obedience is to become a slave in order to become free. He who is not obedient to one will be obedient to many. And who are the many? They are the passions, they are the demons. And in the end, they will remain insubordinate. They will not have peace. Elder Ephraim is most assuredly a saint. And this came about because he obeyed his elder, Saint Joseph. Once he was told by the elder to do an obedience and to obey the order of the second in command of the brotherhood, which was Elder Arsenios, the cave dweller. And Elder Arsenios told the young elder friend to plant onions, but as the elder was getting ready to plant onions, the young holy Ephraim was told to plant them upside down by Elder Arsenios. Of course, this makes no sense on the onset of the command. Why would I bury an onion with the roots facing upward? Why would I bury it upside down? But realizing the importance of obedience, the young Ephraim went ahead and planted the onions upside down. And when they grew, for they did grow, they grew to taste sweeter than any onion he had ever tasted, such as the fruits of obedience. Once St. Joseph, the Hezekast, had assigned Elder Ephraim to chant in the divine services, so the brother, the brotherhood held services in the in the church of, of Saint John the Baptist and Saint Anski um, every Sunday. And of course, the tone was in the fourth tone by Elder Ephraim in his exuberance, recalling how he had heard the fourth tone chanted before when he was still in the world, went ahead and in, unintentionally sung the version that is reserved for funerals. And Saint Joseph reprimanded him for his arrogance, for his pride. And so, in order to beat delusion out of his disciple, he had him prostrate to every single monk who exited the church and say, forgive me, brother, I am deluded. This may seem harsh, but in obeying to this, he started to defeat the passion of pride. He received grace. As a result of this, of this grace-filled life he received through obedience, Elder Ephraim performed many miracles. Uh, Constantine Zalalis, on one of his talks, talks about this, but a young man named John, I believe this was around the year 2015, 2018, uh, he was looking, he was a Greek who was not Orthodox, he was looking to come home to the faith. And so he went out to St. Anthony's Monastery in Arizona, and he was looking to speak with the elder that he had heard of, and finally he saw him coming out, and he spoke to him and said, you know, Elder Frem, this is my story. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking for the truth. And he said, okay, John. He says, do you have a cell phone? He said, well, yes. He says, okay, can you call Mount Athos with it? He said, yes, I can. And he said, okay, call Mount Athos at this time later today. I think it was around 2 p.m. So the elder goes off and John waits and he, he calls Mount Athos. And a voice picks up and he says, hi, uh, you know, uh, Elder Ephraim, I just saw him a couple hours ago. He gave me this number and told me to call him. He said, that's impossible. And he says, why? He says, well, the elder's on, on Mount Athos with us right now. He's visiting Greece. And then 
suddenly he hears something on the other end and he realizes, oh, that's what happened. And Elder Ephraim comes on the phone and he picks up and he says, do you see what orthodoxy is now, John? Out of obedience, this man did exactly as the elder instructed him. And as a result, he had a revelation of God's grace. He beheld an incredible miracle, the likes of which we saw in the time of the apostles were one is transported mysteriously from one place to another. And again, he had this grace because of his obedience. And because he was obedient to his elder, and in the end, God rewarded him. Elder Fred had said that Christ showed perfect obedience to his heavenly father, as well as to his brother, according to the flesh, our Panagia, or that is our most holy in Greek, and to Joseph the betrothed. And how much more, as a result, should we cut off our own will and have obedience to our spiritual father on account of our sins? And of course, children, to have obedience, I'm looking at all of you, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you, to have obedience to your parents. Elder Ephraim had related how Abba Bartosufius of the desert said that a disciple who disobeys his elder, and I would say indeed anyone who is in spiritual obedience to a parent, to a spouse, to a spiritual father, anyone who disobeys their elder is a son of the devil. Because the sin that ultimately, from the passion of pride that caused the devil to fall from grace, was disobedience. But when we obey, we attract the grace of God. And even if we do not know the Beatitudes, even if we are simple and ignorant, obedience bears the fragrance of Christ. And when we have that fragrance of Christ, we become appealing to God and our prayers become appealing to God and he is quick to hear us. As James says in his epistles, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If we disobey our spiritual father, our parents or our spouse, then the devil comes and takes hold of that person's life. And instead of a blessing, one will find a curse. One will find that their endeavors fail. I know of spouses who, when their husbands have requested for something not to happen and they go and do it anyways, somehow this task ends up failing. When we go ahead without a blessing from a priest or a spiritual father to do something, we either become deluded or we all together fail. If it is one thing we must see in the life of our Savior and in the gospel today, is that the fruits of obedience is grace and his life, and the fruits of pride, self-will, and disobedience is death. So remember, dear ones, to be obedient to the gospel, to be obedient to our Lord and Savior. And if you don't have a spiritual father, to pray and seek one. And to be obedient to whatever he tells you. To be obedient to your priest, to your bishop, to your, to your husband, to your mother, to your father. And above all else, do this with love. Even if you do not truly wish to do what you are asked to do, do it out of love. And the grace of God will visit you. And fill you and strengthen you and give you life. Amen.